Frank Chapman was a remarkable museum personality. He was the very first curator of birds in the ornithology department here at the museum. He was known not only for his research, but also building the department into the wonderful collection of specimens that it's known for today, and also known for his habitat groups or dioramas, which were critical as tools for raising awareness for the preservation of birds. To really fully understand Frank Chapman's contribution to ornithology, we almost have to climb into a time machine and transport ourselves back to the 1880s. Birds are in peril. They're being hunted extensively for food. Ornithology really was a newly emerging science, and those involved in science and understanding the population dynamics and the breeding cycles of these birds know that it's only a matter of time before they will become extinct. So it's Frank Chapman that really establishes this protocol of recreating a real place in nature here at the museum. He insists that his taxidermists and his artists travel with him. He gets caught up visiting specific sites collecting the birds and the botanical specimens, the soil, and everything he needs to recreate a footprint of that environment back in the museum. Chapman, soon after arriving here at the American Museum, meets Theodore Roosevelt. And because of Teddy Roosevelt's interest in natural history, the two of them strike up a close friendship. They get along so well because Chapman is an expert at identifying birds. These are the early days of bird watching in America. And Chapman's goal is to make bird watching as popular as he possibly can. He feels that by doing that, he will draw attention to birds and concern for their plight. So it is Frank Chapman that writes the very first popular field guides. Surely Chapman saw his role as a conservationist. He starts the very first Christmas bird counts in 1900 to counteract the practice at that time of going out into the field on Christmas Day and having a hunt where you would try and shoot as many birds as you possibly could. I think of Chapman as my all-time museum hero. Not only did he see his job as one to teach science and to teach facts, Chapman saw the condition of the natural world around him. And he saw these exhibits for what they truly were, powerful tools for nurturing environmental awareness and concern for vanishing birds and threatened ecosystems. 